Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to introduce Bastian Ilso and Carlos Soriano talking about all their work to get more newcomers into the GNOME project in a project in a talk entitled Newcomer Genesis Evolution. Hello everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah? Cool. cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think the, the microphone is not Hola. I think it's not working. Yeah, now it's working. Yeah. It's fine, I guess. Well, welcome to the newcomers talk. Uh, this is the second year we are doing together with Bastian. And um, so we are Bastian Elso, which is a designer, uh, but he's also doing documentation work and you know many things, videos for GNOME. And I started this initiative like three years ago, and I'm also maintainer of Nautilus. And so the news is that we have a new guide for this year. You can find it here. This is the, the main web page of GNOME, and in, in the section coding, you can find the, the, new, the new guide. As you can see, the guide is for coding. It's for people that want to code for GNOME. So one of the things that we were wondering is that maybe we should change it to newcomers code guide, at least for now. Because for the future, we want newcomers guide for designers, for translations, you know, like for many things, because those people are the people that we are missing most on the community. But so far, we focus on the code part. Is my English understandable? Cool. Perfect, because yesterday, nobody was understanding me. So I'm kind of, you know, like, oh, my English is not good. Um, anyway. So before we show to you the new guide, I will hold you a little on that, and I will speak about the history of this initiative. So everything started with something called Nomlove. When I joined Nom, it was called Nomlove, this newcomer's guide. And it was not really great. They had many guides around. The tooling was not prepared for newcomers. Um, how many of you did use Nomlove? Here, one, two, okay, not many. <laughs> I bet you love Yetchville. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it was not very good, so I was quite frustrated, so I started to change it. Uh, so I started this transformation, but it was mostly kind of a mindset change, and like documentation, it was not any technical war. It was more like going to people and say, this is not how you have to present yourself to newcomers. Um, this, is, this is wrong, and the tooling is not prepared for that. So it was one year of convincing people from a newcomer's point of vision of me, because I was a newcomer. So one year passed. Uh, this thing was going well. Now we had a single wiki, and it was kind of changing the mindset of, of the people uh, with the tooling on it. And then the good thing that happened is that Bastian joined, which brings a new vision, brings design advice, so something really neat for these kind of things. So we worked together for one year, and last year we present the Newcomers Initiative. Like we make a reborn of Nomblov with a new name, which is Newcomers Initiative. And can you see the pattern here? is like we have been working on the documentation, we have been working on the mindset of the people, we have been working on you know, many things, but the technical part was still missing, which is more than half of the issues for newcomers. So I'm happy to say that for the last year, we have been working finally on the technical part, and we have a solution of, of, for all of the things that we thought was an uh, issue for newcomers. And is, that's why we name it now like Newcomers Genesis Evolution. <laughs> so before we go to the, to the um, new wiki, I will talk a little about this technical problem. I think it's important to understand what the issues were. So the biggest issue, issue was the build problem. So we were using this tool called GHBuild. How many of you did use GHBuild? I hope more than two. One, two, three, okay, like half of it. Okay, okay, you love it, I know. I know you love Yetville. And so Yetville is it's crap, it's really complex. So if you want to build an application, first you have to build like 80 dependencies. Like for, for example, if you want to build uh, Nautilus, you have to build 
uh, 80 dependencies of Nautilus plus installing some packages plus installing Jetsville, then installing more packages, then building some things, then building the, the, the dependencies, then Nautilus. That's not great. <laughs> and you have many problems uh, with the packages because depending on the distribution, depending on the version, it was not working. Of course, with many dependencies, it comes the build times. And that was around eight hours if no problem was happening. And that's, a, that's because also we were building WebKit, which is like four hours of building. Uh, WebKit is this thing used in a browser, uh, like the, uh, the web engine. Yeah. That was needed for many things, like not only for the browser, like Nautilus needs WebKit, uh, Norm Control Center need, needs WebKit. Another issue is that it was not reproducible. That means for the maintainer, the application was building, but for the newcomer, the application maybe was not building because it's a different distro, it's a different version. So the newcomer comes to the maintainer, say, I have this issue, and the maintainer doesn't know what to do because for, for him it's building. Of course, this was like a death end, and this is like death end for the newcomer. And we were only trying to focus on Fedora and Ubuntu, like the, last, the latest one, but even then it was quite difficult. So we have a solution here, and it's called Flatpak. I guess you know a little about Flatpak. You have heard of it because it's like the big news in the last two years, and mostly in the last year we have been focused really hard on this uh, technical uh, issue for distributing uh, applications. So the good thing, the first good thing is that it's reproducible. That means if the maintainer can build it, the newcomer can build it. So no more issues about this. It's Distro independent, that means uh, no matter what the distro you are using version, you can use an old Debian, you can still uh, contribute to GNOME. And the build times are now around eight minutes, no longer eight hours, which is a big difference. This is because it's using something called runtime, which is, if you know Android, it's kind of similar. You have this lower layer, which is a runtime, and then you can build on top of it. And it has a manifest for each application. That means you can even hack on it. Because before, GHVIL has had a manifest for the whole stack instead of for, for each application. Another issue we, we were facing is the integration problem. So we were using the terminal for everything. Because no software can be integrated with, with GHVIL. Because it's a command line tool. And you have many problems with the packages that at the end, you have to go to a terminal to fix this, these problems. So at the end, terminal was required to build uh, and contribute to GNOME, which is it's not good for, for the new stand, like the standards right now for contributing. Um, usually, you want to use an ID or some kind of UI for, for building and contributing. Um, documentation was also in different places, so it's quite hard. We have no profiling support, we have no debugging support. You can still go to the terminal, but you don't have UI for that. And also for Git. But we have a solution for that as well, which is called GNOME Builder. So GNOME Builder is the new IDE that we are doing in GNOME. We have been doing it for three years, something like this. And it's going really fast on development. The whole thing is that Flatpak is already integrated. So that means you can build an application with a single click. Like you put uh, the URL of, the, of where the code of the application is, and then it will build the runtime and everything, and it's going to be eight minutes with no problem since uh, it's reproducible. If the maintainer can build it, you can build it. So everything going fine. So finally, we can say that Terminal is not required anymore for contributing to GNOME. Another thing that is work is a work in progress is documentation can be integrated. Lucy, that is working for Google Summer of Code this year, is doing this work. And the debugger, debugger can also be integrated. This is harder, but I hope in the next year we can have it. Profiling is also going to be integrated with Sysproof. And hopefully, Git management will have it as well, even if we have some applications like Git Git, but it's not uh, integrated in Builder. So it's nice to have everything in one single application where the newcomer can knows where to move. Of course, in this last year, the problems were not only technical. One of the biggest issues we had is communication. So one of the things we tried to do is making the newcomer communicate with us as soon as possible, or to have some contact. But for communication, we are using IRC, which is a, a 
<laughs> Not good. <laughs> and so what happened is that the newcomers installed this application because the newcomers is using WhatsApp, Facebook, Telegram. Blah, 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 but it's not using IRC. So probably it's installing an application which handles IRC only for contributing to GNOME. So install the application, connect to GNOME, and then ask something. And for 10 minutes, if there is no answer, they close the app, and it's gone. This is a, another death end, because uh, IRC doesn't have a um, like a connectivity persistence. That means if you, close the, if you close the application, everything is gone in difference with WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever. Another thing that we face is that the wiki feels quite old, and that might sound like a detail, but it's not, because it's like the face of what you are going to do. And if you see that it's quite old, then you think that the software behind is also quite old, and it's not really encouraging for, for newcomers. And the wiki also had some kind of, uh, since it was done by, by me, it was only text and one single page, so it was not really great about being visual appealing. So, for example, you didn't have accomplishment uh, feeling, you didn't, have, you, you didn't have clear how many steps are remaining to complete your, your first contribution, you didn't know what to do after you contribute your first patch, and we didn't have the visual guidance for that, like it was only text. So I'm happy to say that we fix all of these points. The first one is the IRC. Now we are present Riot. So Riot is a new chat application. The difference with WhatsApp and everything else is that it integrates different protocols. So for instance, you can use Riot with IRC. You can use Riot with, um, I actually don't know more protocols, but they have like, I don't know, 20, 25 protocols that you can use. And so the good thing is that it has connectivity persistence. That means they can ask something, they can close the app, and when someone answers them, they will receive a notification. And then you can open the application again. It's like WhatsApp or Facebook, you know, like how it should be. So this is one of the best things uh, we could fix. The other thing is that you can use it finally on mobile. Uh, everything is for free, it's free software, so it's really great. I'm really happy that we have this. And, and the maintainer, like the creator of, of this uh, Riot and Matrix, which is the protocol behind, they are helping us a lot. And now I will let Bastian present to you the new guide of newcomers. Let's see if this works. It does. Okay. So um, I'll present to you uh, the work we've done the past 12 months on improving the newcomer guide. And I need this one card. Oh, yes, sorry. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> what I'm showing here are uh, mockups. We worked on uh, improving the front page and get away from using a lot of text and trying to approach uh, something more visual. We have a very clear uh, four steps here uh, showing the process. And we have a very clear uh, go-to action, so you're not in doubt where you have to start if you want to get started contributing. We have a separate page where we are hiding a bit extra information. Uh, throwing all of this on the front page, like we used to do, might be a bit intimidating. But we have, and that's probably the most important part, a direct link to the newcomer channel uh, that gives you this hotline so that in case something goes wrong, we can help you. And then, of course, we have uh, some advice as well. Uh, and this is where the more interesting parts are uh, uh, hidden now. So we have uh, these four steps represented again. Uh, well, actually five, and one of them are already completed. That's uh, more of a psychological thing because now you already have a sense of achievement you've already completed the first step by entering the guide itself. Uh, the first step is choosing uh, an application. Uh, this one uh, is a bit similar to what we had uh, before. Uh, so let's move on. And this is probably where we have some of the biggest changes in uh, the new guide, and that's how simplified the process of installing the application has become. 
this, this page is just documenting to you how to get the application to run, which has gone from a complicated uh, process using ChageBuild to downloading Builder, entering a URL to the repository of the application, and pressing a button. So that means we can keep it down to just three steps and has uh, significantly uh, made it easier to get to uh, this page, which is where we actually want the 90% the of the newcomers to get to the part where you actually start uh, scratching your itch about some problem inside a GNOME application and trying to fix that problem. This is a very long page. Uh, here we are not trying to... <laughs> What can you say? Uh, we're not trying to, to um, we're trying to be elaborate. We are trying to make sure that you have all the tools and the help that you need to uh, fix your first uh, bug. I have uh, the whole uh, thing shown over here, but it's hard to read, of course. Uh, we have links to the documentation. We have direct links to the newcomer box uh, that each of the newcomer application have uh, a, a list of. And then we have information about how to use Boxilla, how to read the, the, the information that you get and an approach to how to uh, get started uh, fixing bugs. And then finally tooling GDK Inspector using git grep to uh, search around in the repository using the applications wiki pages to find uh, application specific developer information and so forth. Then we have the final step where once you have actually managed to solve the problem, you will be uh, <laughs> uh, greeted and rewarded, uh, and then you only have one step left, which is getting it on Boxilla. Uh, at this point, you might have the patch on Boxilla, and then what are you doing? Now you're going to wait for someone to review it, and that might take everything from uh, the same day till a month, hopefully not a month. Um, so uh, we collected uh, guides and tutorials and other information. You know, on top of all of this uh, sense of achievement that you've gotten, you can now dive into some of the conceptual documentation like understanding G objects, understanding how GDK works, playing around with the tooling that the applications actually use, uh, and uh, bonding more with the community as well. So uh, I want to talk a bit about what we have in mind next, both on the short term and also on the long term. Short term, we have a lot of paper cuts we need to fix. Um, we have the new tooling now. We have Flatpak, we have Builder, and we have that covered in the newcomer guide and updated in the newcomer guide. But there's a lot of tiny issues, uh, things uh, that has to be fixed, both in the Flatpak side, on the Builder side, on the Newcomer Guide side. Uh, and we just need to identify those issues and uh, try to come up with solutions for them. We also have uh, a really nice new website layout on gnome.org, made thanks to Tom. And uh, that also involves uh, the wiki, so everything is now streamlined and looks very modern. Uh, except you might have noticed that the mockups I made back then were made for the old wiki layout, so we need to update the, 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 the layouts uh, as well. We have some nice things like a cool wiki sidebar, we have text in multiple columns, and we are making use of the width a lot better. And also it makes it possible to read the wiki on a mobile phone. So, for example, I'm still in investigating exactly how can we approach uh, using this uh, larger width because it uh, has some issues for the way the text flows uh, and things like that. Uh, and making multi-column layouts in the wiki is a bit, uh, yeah, not so good. <laughs> then we also have the longer term. So now I presented the, the shorter term, which is... I don't know, maybe we are talking a uh, few months, you know, it's uh, stuff we can work on immediately. But on the longer term, uh, we always want to uh, consider what should actually go inside the newcomer guide and, and keep going back to this question. And that's also something that me and Carlos would like to discuss with all of you here today about, uh, you know, uh, what, what, uh, what should fundamentally go into uh, the very first experience because it is a really Im important 
uh, platform uh, that gives you the impression of the community as a whole. Mm. So uh, what I've done is I've also looked a bit in the newcomer channel and digging through the logs, I have some extracts of empirical data that I've collected with different uh, newcomers, some going in saying hello, leaving again, some uh, saying that they don't know where to start from, uh, but they're also reading the guide. Uh, some describing that they are a college student and engineering student. We have a lot of different uh, people with a lot of different backgrounds and they are facing a lot of challenges and they are also uh, have a lot of different motivations. For example, uh, you might imagine that some go in there, I have an example up here, some might have a motivation that they want to join GNOME because they want to improve how many different programming languages they know um, and uh, want to get better uh, at programming in general. But these motivations can so also change over time. It might be that you start out using this motivation that you are, that you want to improve your skills, but as the time goes, you also kind of bond with the community and then this is what is keeping you going. This is what you uh, are really staying here for. Another challenge, uh, or what can you say, another question that comes up in, in trying to define this question is what kind of challenges do they then face using our new technology? Uh, many of the paper cards already touch upon this. I have some, I found some examples in the newcomer uh, channel about issues with installation, uh, which might be due to a lack of uh, error handling and conflicts between distro version provided uh, of a builder and then the flatpak version and then the desktop files get overridden and things like that. Small things that uh, end up uh, requiring the newcomers to go to the newcomer channel, ask a question and wait five minutes to don't know how long uh, for an answer. Uh, and we want to avoid that as much as possible in a sense. Uh, at least uh, the, the, the technical problems of course <laughs> It would be great if all newcomers, they would, as the first thing they do, greet the community from there. Okay. Another issue is uh, connectivity issues. Uh, we are aware that uh, there are, for example, universities that put you behind a proxy and then HTTPS links don't work and you can only use Git link, but in the guide it says uh, HTTPS. So maybe we're missing some fallback there that we can try to, to mitigate. Uh, this as well. We also have some cases uh, where we are lagging follow-up uh, and I, I have uh, some uh, example here of uh, that happening in, in Boxilla and also uh, in the newcomer channel and that's of course uh, also important to, to try to fix but we should also realize that um, uh, that we have uh, limited uh, resources and time as well so we need to find some efficient ways we can try to uh, solve these issues. Um, if anything, maybe we can do something so that uh, we in the newcomer channel are more aware when these things happen so that no one ends up in a situation where it seems like there's no one answering at all. Um, <laughs> one thing I like to do is also consider individual cases and try to track them. So you have, for example, uh, newcomers getting advice about uh, what things to read and trying to search this up, we might be able to identify what guides need to be improved and what are they actually finding. And what is actually happening? Is they, are they coming back later or are they, is something else in their life taking up and uh, taking over? Um, is, are they still excited to contribute to GNOME after reading the documentation that they might find? So there are a lot of different um, challenges and uh, we as a community need to identify which ones are, <laughs> well first of all, which ones are, are the ones that we can uh, solve and, and what kind of solutions do we have uh, that we can use uh, to, to, to try to fix them. Not everything is, is, is fixable, but we can, uh, we, we can uh, do our best. And, and that's where the guide is really uh, a, a useful platform because it provides an efficient way for us to try to address the challenges through uh, appealing visuals, uh, using the language correctly, 
and our everyday conversations with newcomers in the newcomer channel as well. Uh, but we'd also really like input from, from all of you if you have other ways you can think of that are, that are efficient ways we can address these challenges. So one thing uh, I talked with um, uh, Carlos and uh, Georges uh, about uh, was uh, about uh, goal setting since uh, in, 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 in a lot of the interns they are having these uh, weekly meetings uh, with, with their mentors which is a useful way to keep track on one hand of uh, what do you need to do and then reflecting about how did that go? Did it go bad? Why did it go bad? Did it go well? Why did it go well? A bit like uh, what you see on, on universities with supervisor meetings either happening bi-weekly or weekly and in that sense keeping yourself in the loop and keeping yourself aware of the progress you are making. This was uh, what we had for you. Uh, you can visit the newcomer guide here on this link. Thank you very much. <laughs> and if you have any uh, input, I've listed all the topics we've been talking about here today. Uh, and if you have any questions. Have like yes, all right, okay. great. Sounds good. Does this need to be transferred around? Yes. All right. I'll just give it to you. Okay. <laughs> you Any questions? One. You have one here. That was easy. Right. Hello. Um, so first of all, awesome work. Like this is a huge step forward. Um, having like looked at the the sort of like newcomer flow, I don't know, a couple of years ago, yeah. this is a huge step forward. Um, but like mm, on, on a couple of your points, like um, I don't know, like sort of giving people a clear path. I feel like one thing that, at least for me, has always been kind of weird is like what language is kind of the standard language. Where like the examples are like there's C, there's Python, there's JavaScript, and there's there's Vala. But then people say don't use Vala, and like it, it's I think having kind of a clear direction there would go a long way. Yeah, so it's true that. I mean, one of our strengths is to allow people to use any language they want. But it's true that some languages has less support than others. On the other hand, I don't want to tell newcomers, use C. <laughs> I don't want, because I'm developing C every day. It's my work, and I hate it. <laughs> and I want to move to something else. Um, so I actually try to put in the newcomer apps a variety of Python, JavaScript, you know, so I guess we, we have to push for this, for more documentation for JavaScript, for more documentation for Python. It's true that Bala is delicate. And so, yeah, it's delicate. <laughs> right. And, and I try to not put any newcomer app with Bala. But if the maintainer of that, if the maintainer of, of that application is really into newcomers, then I put it. Because uh, what I found, found about newcomers is that what they care is about feedback, about connection with the maintainer. The language is something that after you finish university, after you are have, have been working for one, two years, you have touched Python, C, many languages. So it, it won't be a problem on the, lo on the long term. But the maintainer being responsible is responsive is a, is a problem that you face short term and long term, you know. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. It's like, I, I mean, clear path. I mean, we allow these options. Um, maybe Vala shouldn't be an option, yeah. But I think Python and, and JavaScript is fine so far for the documentation we have. Or did you find any issue? Yeah. So maybe trying to clarify that in the guide, what are the like primary languages that we would recommend newcomers and yeah, yeah, maybe that things something like that. Maybe I mean we've tr we've had an effort trying to decide a. Uh, a forerunner language, uh, but then that also causes a lot of discussion uh, yeah. in the community every time that's brought up. 
So it's also, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but I think it's a, like a, the, the newcomer app should be represent the languages that are commonly used and are, you know, so yeah, yeah. The, in that sense, uh, I think we can do something there. Uh, yeah, like yeah. JavaScript, Python probably is the best. I had a feeling I uh, should uh, use JavaScript in the new uh, commerce section, but the documentation for C was much better, and there were much more examples, so I switched to C <laughs> and used that. Yes. And, and there was like um, no clear way where should I yeah. continue. So this is, this is actually one of our top priorities for the last year and for this year, to make sure that languages has the documentation as same as C. And it's actually like, believe me, top priority for the board, top priority for the, for the non-project, like for putting money on it. So it's true that it's not there yet, but we don't want to say use C. Like we want to say, okay, let's use JavaScript, then you will see, ah, the documentation is crap, whatever. But then you will ask the maintainer, and since the maintainer is into newcomers, they will help you, and then okay, I can use this, I can use this, you know. So you can have it like a workaround. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. I mean, you get the skill to transfer the C documentation to JavaScript <laughs> on your mind, you know, like in C something, and then JavaScript. Yeah, I think it's like this. So you kind of guess. Oh yes. For Python, there is documentation already, yeah, that's like, that's like the, the new one. It's like three months ago or something ah, like this. There is a new one, and that's like, like, like C. Like it's a website. It's quite good. And yeah. hello, uh, Carlos. This is Ismael. Oh, Ismael. <laughs> okay. Encantado. <laughs> Igualmente. Um, First, um, I, I, I have been very interested too about looking for an alternative for IRC in our local community. I am very interested in, of course, uh, open, open, um, open group activ uh, activity and transparency as much as, as we can. Our experiment has been using Telegram uh, open groups. It runs more or less well. What are the competitive advantage you find in Riot versus right. Telegram? Right. The key is that it's integrated with IRC. That means people on the non-community can still use IRC, while newcomers, or me, because I hate IRC, can, we can use Riot and communicate together with no issue. Like, it's completely integrated. It's part of the protocol of Matrix. Like, Matrix, which is the protocol behind Riot, is made for this. It's made for integrated with as many protocols as, as possible. Because the problem we have right now is that we have too many chat apps, too many protocols. WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, uh, you know, like, there are 14. So this is the key for us, basically. So Matrix can uh, act as a, an aggregator or middleware for all bridge. these protocols? Like a bridge. Bridge, OK, bridge, yeah, OK. Yeah. Now see. Um, another question that suddenly I realized it. Um, obviously uh, uh, your your work on, on, on the e-commerce uh, job is, uh, work is, is, is extraordinary, it's, it's, it's a need, it's an important requirement. Have you uh, have you uh, are you considered some kind of code snippets uh, searching Feature because I'm not really a programmer, but um, I remember from the past uh, a, a lot of requirements or, or requests on, on this sense that at some moment was uh, satisfied by co uh, Google Code Search. I don't remember the name, but I'm not sure if is a, is there a, cor a current alternative and if you are thinking in, in something related. So the question is, is if in Builder we are planning to put some kind of a snippet, a snippet, a snippet, snipe. I don't know. A snippet search, right? Or in Builder, or in the in, in a website, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's in it's in the plant. Yeah, it's planned. Oh, hi. Um, 
I'm curious how, um, if you guys have any thoughts on how to integrate design thinking to different levels of your project. So, design. De yeah, design thinking. So I know you guys are still working on the design side of the newcomers guide, um, but are you thinking about um, like how to create more like cross disciplinary communication so that developers and designers can mm -hmm. work together and um, communicate and you know hopefully come up with yeah. better outcomes than we can separately? Yeah, that's a good question, Bastian will answer. <laughs> because you are the designer. <laughs> uh, well, I think I'm talking without the microphone now. Oh, I, th yeah. I think everyone. Yeah, I think people can hear you. Yeah, it's, it's probably fine. I don't know if it's for the recording or maybe. So I think uh, definitely uh, that, that uh, havi having these uh, bridges between different disciplines is are important and from the newcomer guide perspective that's also something we can try to achieve uh, namely through uh, for example uh, the advice we have about how you act in the community you know that you know it's it's true that we we it's very easy to get into a specific role and then having expectations that okay if I if I mark this for the designers, then you know I don't need to. Then there is no communication between us. Then they will they will just receive a notification and and that's it. Uh, but having uh, facilitating communication between those those two are also important. The way that works in GNOME right now is that we have a specific channel uh, for the design team called GNOME Design, and we have specific channels for the different applications. In my case, I'm staying both in the GNOME design team channel, where all the designers are, uh, but I'm also staying in a specific application channel because that's, uh, I, I feel that uh, as a designer, I'm part of both of them. So I'm part of the, the, even though I'm not doing the coding, I'm still part of that team because I'm doing the, the, the design work of it and I'm still helping newcomers, even if they are wanting to code to get started doing that in that team. Uh, so, so in that sense, I, I think it's, it's a nice way to achieve this kind of uh, multidisciplinary uh, teams in, in, in GNOME. Um, it's lunchtime. If your question's quick. <laughs> it's really quick. Okay. Um, this might be more of a suggestion. I'm also a designer with Robin at Endless, and uh, I was poking around uh, looking at the projects in the Newcomer's Guide recently, and um, something that was confusing for me was to try to understand the roadmap for a certain project, and uh, it's for specifically from a design point of view, it's it's really helpful to understand the context for certain decisions that were made in a project, and just communicating over IRC, it's really hard to get that common understanding and communication. So maybe that could be integrated into this project, improving the roadmaps. I think different. I think currently the roadmaps are uh, maintained by the application maintainers, and the application maintainers often take a software developer role, which also means that there, there, can, there can be a lot of elements in there that are not so much about the roadmap from a design perspective, but a roadmap from an implementation perspective, mm -hmm. uh, and and that that is a part that that I think uh, is is lacking uh, in in the individual projects as well. Um, yeah, so the, we have the roadmaps in every application web page, mm -hmm. but as, as he said, it's uh, developer uh, focus. We have all the designs on, on a GitHub repository uh, divided by apps. So you can go there and see what we want for the future. So, and we have the mockups in there. So this is how we do, but it's true that we could try to make it, you know, a symbiosis within them. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of communication with the design team. Like, GNOME is a design-driven project. So that changed a few years ago. And so for every decision or most of the decisions, we move because of the designers say so. So it's very important for us. But it's true that for a newcomer, like for a designer trying to be involved in what we do is not easy. And it's something, it's actually my top priority for the next year. 
uh, making designer contribution better. Um, if you want, you can get in touch with me or with Alan, which is the designer, mm -hmm. and we can talk about that. Okay, thanks. Brilliant. No more, quite, no more time for questions, I'm afraid. Um, a huge thanks to Carlos, Carlos, Carlos and Bastian um, for all this work and for the talk. <laughs> Talks resume at two with the keynote.